everybody, I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Brand new documentary coming to Showtime Sports all about Super Bowl MVP Julian Edelman. Guy O'Shelling, Soft Swissa. Guys, what's going on? Good How to are meet you. Good to see you, DJ. Thanks for coming in. So, 100% Julian Edelman. I mean, there's a lot to unpack with this story. You guys have obviously known and worked with Jules for a long time. So, how did that relationship first start out? Let's start with you, Soft. Uh, so, uh, I started with Jules uh, in 2012. I was a. Uh, a horribly failed entrepreneur, <laughs> and uh, he wasn't much better. He uh, he was a uh, 2012. He was a seventh round draft pick. He had played for four seasons, had 76 catches over those four seasons. Wow, you and, still remember exactly? Oh, I remember everything, <laughs> except everything I did yesterday. Uh, and uh, he was on a contract year. They brought in Wes Welker was gone, but they brought in Danny right. Amendola to take his job. Mm, yeah, Aaron Hernandez was still completely not in jail. Or right, and else. he was doing his thing on the field. And he was doing his field, yeah. and Gronk was perfectly healthy. And uh, I was, I had a failed, failed mega startup, uh, and I was flat on my ass, and he broke his ankle a week after I got fired from my startup. Wow. And we were both a rock together, and he's like, bro, you're a marketing guy, let's do some marketing. And normally I'd be like, how the hell am I gonna help this guy? <laughs> but I was so down in the gutter, I said, screw it. And so uh, we started uh, whipping up, went to my roots, designed mm -hmm. his logo, um, making, made some social media posts, and I knew I had to start uh, getting real about video, and that's where we found this guy. Yeah. And Kyler Kyler is, comes into the fold. Kyler's basically been the director for all those awesome videos you've ever seen Julian in. So what's it been like hopping into this with these guys? Unbelievable. The, the like, they kind of let me run. A little bit. That's you know? nice from the production standpoint, right? Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of the one with the like the education mm -hmm. in, in the film world. You know, yeah, I went yeah. to film school and all this stuff, and a soft education is purely from just watching Star Wars probably a hundred times. And <laughs> I think Julian's education. Not a bad education, right? <laughs> and I think Julian's education is having a soft talk about Star Wars a hundred times. <laughs> and so, like, you know, I'm kind of the one that's like, hey, you know, you can't do that because of this and this. So, but they've allowed, it, allowed me to kind of go crazy, and, and I think. You know, I'll push a soft to go to some place, and you know, a soft might push me to go to some place, and, and I think it's a nice little triad of a uh, creative juice, and I think colli our collaboration has been pretty incredible. Yeah, it seems like you have a nice little triangle going on here with Edelman at the top, you guys here, and again, you mentioned injury. Here's a knee injury in the preseason for Edelman, and then this documentary comes about, and it just literally got done. So take me back a couple years of 2017, how this all starts up. Uh, we. Uh, Man, we had a show, a scripted comedy, yeah. lined up with a network that I shall not name. Mm. Um, Fell through. It was a go. Julian got hurt, and they mm. pulled it. And and then his injury became season-ending frequently right. after that. And we were like, oh, man, we were done. And uh, I think what we learned then in that moment was a truth that we had been in den denial about for a long time. If we're going to make it, we're going to make it entrepreneurially. No one's cutting us a check and saying, hey, right, go, go do it. your yeah, thing. Yeah, it's just not work like who that. we are. Yeah. None of us are built that mm -hmm. way. Julian's, Julian's a seventh round guy, you know, who's been underrated his whole life, yep. right? So he was, he was a first time filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I'm a two time entrepreneurial failure, right? Like ragtag group. I love so it. I love the story. You know, yeah. So we knew we had to make something ourselves. We did envision this, though. This was not the plan. So what was the initial plan? I don't know, Short web series, form, web series, mm. digital content thing. Yeah. Not this. Never a documentary. N uh, documentary has like a a door to kind of okay. tell. Because we always want to tell scripted kind of, like scripted, you know, yeah. features, mm. shows. Yeah. Um, so the documentary was a window because we had a story that had a little bit of juice to it. Right. Granted, we didn't know to what level the juice was going to like end up to. You know, in terms of, you know, where Julian ended up and how this kind of story right. finishes. But. Um, you know, we, we thought we had something here, and I think along with our entrepreneurial spirit, and you know, Julian, give him credit because he lets us kind of push the boundaries. You know, we might write a script, and where most athletes would just take that and be like, "Are you kidding me? Throw it out?" He'll right. go, "Oh, okay." Yeah. Or you know, let's try it this way. Let's do it this way. So, so he has legit input, which is cool. absolutely. Yeah. He, really he lets does. us go crazy, and I think that in this documentary, we get a little nuts. You know, we get a little nuts, <laughs> and uh, you know, that's another way because we did it ourselves that we were able to go nuts and, and kind of tell a sports story in a way that. I don't think, you know, has been done before, so. So when you say going nuts, do you expand on that a little bit? How did you guys dive deeper? Uh, we've got Snoop Dogg reading Julian's <laughs> suspension letter and smoking a blunt. 
right? That's like, one way to go. Not, out. That's, no, there is smoke in the room. Okay. Oh, oh my, I'm sorry. He's not I'm smoking sorry. on camera. There's, there's smoke in the room. Well, technically, he's not smoking. No. I think the interpretation is that he smoked. Perhaps. I think okay. But yeah, even right, Snoop Dogg right, yeah. reading the suspension yeah, we'll letter, there, yeah. that, that's one thing. Yeah. You throw smoke into the mix, great. But even yeah. that's a really interesting twist to that right. whole story. You know, you know to, to build upon that, there's an animation in it. We mm. had a great animation team that did unbelievable stuff and really kind of challenged us. And it was a beautiful relationship. And um, the music is incredible. We got some amazing music in it. Post that you Malone. See. Mm. Two Johnny Cash songs. Yeah. That's a nice Black mix. Keys, yeah. yeah. Snoop. Like some unbelievable music. We got a New York Giants fan narrating it. Oh yeah. wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we did a uh, you know people are kind of a little hot on that, but I think we treat it in a very way that's it's kind of fun. Our opening is is Mark Wahlberg establishing that Julian is not famous enough to have this. <laughs> that's, that's our opening. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think what's what's amazing working with Asaf, and he's just kind of a magician in terms of. Like, you know the Parcells lines, like if I'm gonna coach, you know, I wanna go go to the grocery store too. Right. You know what? If I'm gonna direct, I'll let Asaf go to the grocery store yeah. all day long because of the the materials that he brings back and the the opportunities and the people we can it's just unbelievable what the music we've been able to get and the the celebrities and other athletes, just unbelievable uh, kind of ingredients we're able to make this thing into a you know a great meal, hopefully. I've accrued a lot of debt. Mm. <laughs> 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 a big deal to pay. Well, I know you guys had Bill Burr in there, and I know you were posting about him that you enjoyed that conversation. Yeah. You had Brady in there, too. So yeah. what was it like? You, I mean, you spent all this time with Edelman, but you hear other people talk about him, and you capture that on film. You capture that through your storytelling. What was it like unpacking that part of it? It's unique for me, I think, differently from you in mm -hmm. one way. So we have Coast Productions. Mm -hmm. I also own an ad agency called Super Digital. Gotcha. And Super Digital is responsible for Julian's, <laughs> Julian's like marketing deals and um, you know all the kids' books we've written and all the sort of different things that all the different and, and Tyler's for touched a lot. Of right. okay, but yeah. for many many years, it was my job to sort of craft the persona that you see. I gotcha. Now I'm in this project. I've needed to combat mm -hmm. what we've crafted mm -hmm. uh, all these years. It's like, oh yeah, all that sheen, all that, all that makeup. It was a Maybelline ad for seven years, <laughs> and now, oh, by the way, here's some realness. Right. So it, it was a little bit uh, challenging for me, but that's why this guy's uh, had his head on right, because I would have sp spun off the moon trying to solve that. Yeah, just getting that story, compacting it all into what an hour, mm -hmm. fifteen, hour thirty. Yep. I mean, that's not an easy thing to do. So how did you go about it from a storytelling perspective? So. I was always kind of open when we set out to do this thing, right? When we started in September 2017, all we had was Julian's backstory and Julian's knee injury. Mm -hmm. And we always kind of had a kind of combative relationship in that front because, you know, we're the writing team and very much the creative team. Right. And everything that gets done is because we say so first, right? You know, it's not just like, oh, I want to do this way. This, this is a give and take. And so we had the story of the knee injury, but from the onset we wanted it to be beyond what you'd see on like a run-of-the-mill sports documentary, right? That you've seen the injury story a hundred thousand times, and no we question. set out from the beginning. I hate we sports documentaries. Stop doesn't even watch me. I hate sports. <laughs> I hate documentaries and sports documentaries. I'm like so you're the perfect guy to jump into yeah. 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 <laughs> So like, where well, I was always kind of keeping my own structure and story aside. Like, well, how do we elevate this? Right. How do I not go to my cell phone in this scene? How mm -hmm. do we like punch it up a little bit further? How do we keep you locked in? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh. exactly. And you know, with the story, with Julian's story, there was a natural progression. It just kind of things just happened. And there was probably 10 times in this movie that, you know what, this movie's done, it's, it's over. We had 10 hours of footage, but it's nothing. We got 30 hours of footage, mm. but throw it away. And you need a ton for a doc. That's what a lot of people don't understand. 10 yeah. hours, it seems like a ton, but it really no, isn't. No, it's like a minute. Yeah. And so it just kind of really built upon it. And then the story of this documentary is, is very similar to the story of Julian in that it really shouldn't exist, you know, but through sheer force of will, sheer like entrepreneurial mentality, that we kind of manifested something greater than the sum of its parts. Mm. So, I mean. It's true. It's true. Yeah. It, it, that, and he's absolutely right. I, I don't compare, does this scene work after this scene and complete an arc? Mm. Do I want to check my DMs right now? That's that's the challenge that we're facing. Yeah, am I going to get bored yeah. during this the, hour and 15? It's, I mean, it's not even a failing of a filmmaker. No. It's, it's the power of the other thing. Absolutely. we got to fight that. Yeah, so just we, the yeah. present world that we live in. So, yeah. so we had a great uh, balance between, like, I'm always kind of thinking bigger picture. Mm -hmm. well, how does this scene play into this scene? And he's always thinking, it's like, does this scene work just in a nutshell? And I think with that kind of, him keeping an eye on the individual scene and me keeping an eye on the whole picture, uh, I really thought that 
you know, we got something. We got we got to a place. Yeah. Um, so we were both kind of keeping an eye on, you know, the minutia, but also, you know, the bigger picture at the same time. So in film and TV, we've seen the father-son relationship in a lot of different ways. Julian's relationship with his dad seems really unique. When you guys look at it, how would you describe it to somebody who hasn't met those two guys? It's a... Uh, <laughs> It's a dirty Steve Jobs and his iPhone. <laughs> that's, that's what Frank is. <laughs> Frank built that thing with a hammer and clubs mm. in a garage because Julian is not a genetic freak. No. Julian is not built to be a top wide receiver in the league. He was not born for it. He was made for it. And, that, and there's a huge distinction there. The Kent State, and Kent State was the highlight. Right. He was a community college for yeah. years. But playing quarterback at Kent State, that's not yeah. supposed to be a Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl no, MVP. No, no. Oh, believe me. In 2013, <laughs> I was acutely aware of this. <laughs> I believe this was this You're ball. like, so I've locked up with this guy, and this is where the league's at. I wonder if it's too late to go to business school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, so... Um, the, uh, but um, but just rough around the edges, in ter just not a perfectly genetically made wide receiver, quarterback, et cetera. And then his dad is just a little bit rough around the edges too and pushing uh, yeah, him and driving him. just a little bit. And I'm glad you pick up on the, on the father-son relationship because I always knew going into this that was a little bit of a nugget. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how exactly it was going to manifest in the film. And I, and I think with you know the action, the the things that actually happened in the story, it kind of built upon itself in a very nice way to kind of really, you know, build some friction in that relationship, but also kind of resolve it in a way that kind of makes them stronger in the long run, all while kind of showing, you know, the roots of that relationship and, and kind of how it developed over time. Um, so like I really think that that's kind of like the core because at the end of the day, Julian should very well be working at his dad's garage. Right. He should. Yeah. And you know, have you seen it? No, I've only seen clips oh, of it. Yeah. Get to. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah, so I mean, Julian should be a mechanic working in his dad's garage, yeah. but his dad had this mentality, and I mean, we could really, really, really dive into it. Uh, you know, you only have so many, so many minutes, but um, yeah, I mean, that's the the impetus of the whole Julian Edelman story is the Frank story, and, and I think that kind of shows um, with the final product. Hard work. I think the thing about hard work is that people don't people don't inherently have a problem with hard work. Right. They have a problem with hard work, but not knowing where to lead you. Mm. Like well I don't said. like yeah. I'm mowing a lawn because I want to mow the lawn. Right. But if you're mowing a lawn and you don't know what you're gonna get after you mow the lawn, that's a hard thing to do. Definitely. But that's you put what the Frank, effort. Yeah. In. Yeah. Exactly. You gotta give them the direction. Right. Yeah. That's but Frank really put thing. it in. Just mow that. Fuck. Mow that lawn. <laughs> just mow that lawn. So, and I think that that's sort of what Julian is. Mm. He knows that he's just going to work, and that good things will come from the work, and not the reward from mm. the work. And that's a. And there's a lesson there. It's something we try to do as well is that so much in stories, particularly in, in sports documentaries and sports stories, is that like hard work is this glorified like, oh, hard work, that achieves all things. And it's true, hard work does achieve everything. But there's also some drawbacks to it. It's yeah. not all just roses, right? No, definitely you know, not. It just so happened that Julian's hard work was directed towards, you know, a very glamorous kind of career, right, in professional football. But if, if Julian was a was a mechanic or if Julian was an accountant that like hard work is like maniacal mm. and like you wouldn't want to hang out with Julian the accountant <laughs> but just so happens that that kind of hard work that Frank instilled in them that kind of the mentality both pros and cons led to him to have a career where it is kind of glamorous. I think we sound like art house <laughs> goons right now. <laughs> well it's interesting what you're saying giving all this context because from the outside I see the relationship with Brady and Edelman and it makes a lot of sense just in terms of their backstories but you give more of this substance, you can see a deeper level. How do you think that relationship has developed, and, and why do you think those guys click so much? Um, I think if you're a guy, I mean, uh, man, I can't speak to that 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 intelligently, but um, I have to believe that if you've enjoyed success at the level that Tom has, you're just looking for a person that will do what it takes to be around you, be successful around you, to get to the level quick. And I think that Julian is that creature to a T. Julian is going to say yes. He will, no, will not. If Tom has any kind of request, whether, whether it be verbal or non, Julian's going to say yes and generate the exact solution Tom's looking for without even thinking to question that. Mm. And I think a guy like Tom needed that. And I think that's, that contributes to their success. Um, they also have a big brother, little brother thing right. going on. Yeah, it seems like that, there's that too. Yeah, I mean, you've been around a lot of different productions. What was it like having Brady in front of the camera? He was the only interview I was nervous about. Really? And it wasn't like a mental nerves 
mentally I'm fine. Yeah. I've, I've been work with crazy people, particularly with Dr. Sure. Bell's. Oh, yeah. But it was physical nerves. I was interviewing it, my leg was kind of shaking. <laughs> and I was like, mentally I was fine. I was like, why is my leg well, You're talking to the shaking? greatest quarterback of all time. Yeah, so yeah. And, and with Brady, we did some great, we did some funny stuff with him, and, and he kind of, he kind of understood what we were trying to do, and he kind of played with us a little bit. And I, and I think with all of our celebrities and all the athletes we, we feature in this project, they were they were keen to see what we were trying to do, and they were like, to play with us a little bit. It's not just like I'm hearing right. what Michael Strahan has to say. He kind of bought into it, and there's some humor into it, and there's true. this kind of like off the wall um, tone that we try to set not only in our interviews. But yeah. So you mentioned the suspension before, and you think about this incredible underdog story. The suspension kind of dings that whole shiny persona, right? So just take me inside what that was like for him to deal with, and how he rose from that. Uh, so, Julian talks to Frank, is that mm -hmm. every yeah. single day? Yeah. And we counted, and you'll see this in the doc when you see it, they didn't talk for 81 days. Wow. And Julian, and Frank is Julian's center. Yeah. So, it was crazy watching Julian, like, devolve into tactics of, like, training and, like, getting his mind right that were totally foreign to him. Hmm. When he didn't have his center, because they just had like a, a nasty fight, and I and it was over that, or was it, it something separate? It wasn't over that. It, it wasn't over that because everything is still sort of, you know, we, we can't speak on, on parts of it because sure. there's just not enough information there on, on a number of but things. The suspension happens. This Ju sort of falling yeah. out with the dad happens. Frank didn't like how Julian handled it. Okay, and that's what led to their split. Gotcha. But and 81 can, days is a long time long for these guys. Time. And, yeah. and you can see and explain yeah. everything that, yeah. And yeah. And, and I think that I really can't really speak for Julian's experience, you know, with, with the suspension. But in terms of how we handled it in the movie and our experience with making the movie, we had, we had some conversations where, like, it's done. The movie's done. We're not going to be able to do oh, it. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, we're just going to throw it away, and that's it. And then... I would have chopped no. it up to YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Something, right? yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's still <laughs> frustrating because it's like, okay, he has his injuries, yeah. coming back, everything's yeah. on the way up, we got the Super yeah. Bowl, it's a great story, and then, boom, this is a major roadblock for yeah. you guys. And, and then over time, we kind of, and, and Julian was a part of it, we're just kind of like, you know what, if we treat this in an authentic kind of organic way, I think that we can tell a story beyond, you know, what's in the news article. So... As a filmmaker, yeah. that suspension was a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We can look back and now and well, say Well, hold, yeah. hold on. During that 30 days, we shot Wahlberg. Yeah. We shot Wahlberg. Yep. We shot Bill Burr. Yep. Guy? Yes. Guy Fury was yeah. in that, isn't that in September? Uh, it was the day Julian came back. It was the day Julian came back. Yep. But yep. even we still were, within we that window. We were able to get yeah. a lot of guys to I'm do sure. stuff yeah. with, with this guy being inactive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Uh, I don't want to reveal too, too yeah. much, but there's yeah. there's some moments that kind of came organically mm. as a result of that. Of that. Yeah, yeah, that uh, I really think rounds the story out and makes it more of a human story than just kind of a sports story. You won't be bored. No, you won't be bored. We, that was our <laughs> one A agenda. We just uh, this thing has to be entertaining and has to be fun. And Showtime seems like a great spot for. I mean, we had Meta World Peace here with his documentary. Showtime's banging out some really cool stuff right now. And not even just saying that because they're within mm -hmm. CBS. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Um, I mean, I'm a billions guy. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Yep. Um, uh, uh, I'm excited for City on the Hill. I haven't seen that first one yet. Haven't seen I, that. I, I, the I loud, the loudest that voice, out. the new uh, Roger yeah. Ailes. I've seen the first four. That's yeah. oh, is it? Really is it good? good? I mean, yeah. I think I got such a crush on Naomi Watts. I don't know if that's, <laughs> no, that's not. That's not Naomi. Watts. Oh, that's no. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> Who knows, Naomi? If you yeah. see it, yeah. it stops here. Yeah. Uh, Show, Showtime's been unbelievable. They've let us. They've kind of got our vision mm -hmm. right from yeah. the start, and they just kind of let us run. And yeah. it's been kind of incredible. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Friday's a big day. A huge day. Yeah. yeah. We're so excited. So when people check it out, what are there's a lot to the story, but what mm -hmm. are some big takeaways for people to walk away with? It's just not another sports talk. It's just not. And this is from a guy who hates sports I, documentaries. I, 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 wouldn't do, I wouldn't do that to you. Yeah. This is not another sports documentary. You're not going to have to see he buy his boys like watches. You're not. It's not an episode of Cribs with extended right. stuff. It's not about just. It's not just him in the gym the whole time. This is a. This is a rock and roll documentary mm -hmm. that happens to be about sports. Right. And like you said, a human story yeah. too, not just a sports story. Yeah. And to build up us off, I would say, you know, if you watch this movie. TV or their living room after just watching it. I'd like them to take away that, oh, you know what? You can tell sports stories this way. 
Oh, okay. oh. You know what? You can do it like that. Mm. Wow, interesting. And maybe it might click for the young creative or even us or someone else. Like, oh, maybe this can shift a little bit how we tell sports stories in the sports world. Yeah, definitely. And for as much love as there is for Edelman, there's a lot of hatred for him and from other teams. I mean, we have Jets fans here in the office that yeah. can't stand him. Yeah. Yeah. But that will bring eyes to the set, which is that's, definitely something you guys are going what for. we're looking for. Controversy yeah. is good. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, that's right. So, thanks Thank you, hey, DJ. Tyler, thanks, thanks a lot. Man. You guys can catch brand new documentary, 100% Julian Edelman, Friday on Showtime. We'll see you next time here on The Sit Down.